Hmm, what should I make a video about this week? Crap. 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 Hey everyone, it's Ryan with this Smart House. I apologize for this video taking so long to make. I know I promised way back when a quick solution on how to solve this error message that if you might be receiving if you followed some of my previous guides, especially if you've done the ESP presence video, the car integration video with Torque, or any of the videos that I've done that require a manual MQTT entry. Well, earlier this year, they announced that they were going to be moving away from including the MQTT domains under the individual sensors. So previously, you would have your MQTT sensors living under binary sensors, sensors, switches, lights, all those sort of things. So you would actually define an MQTT platform under those additional domains, and that's how you would set those up. Well, now they've decided to merge those all together into a single MQTT domain that then is defined different platforms like your binary sensors and regular sensors. So it's very, very easy. So nothing to really worry about, but we wanna make sure that we do this in the right way. There's a couple of quick tricks that you need to do to ensure that you get the code correct. So if you're running any modern version of Home Assistant and you go into your settings, you'll notice the new repair section at the top. Now this tells you if there's any errors in your codes or if anything that's coming up as being removed or deprecated. So if I click on mine, I say show all repairs, you'll see I've got three things showing up in mine that need to be fixed. I've got the binary sensors, a switch, and my sensors, all containing manually entered MQTT data in our YAML files. So we need to correct all of these. So quickly, we're gonna jump into my code editor, which I use VS Code, but you can use whatever you want, that you can access your YAML files, and we're gonna make those changes in there real fast. So the first thing we have to confirm is that we have an mqtt.yaml file. So I've got one right here, and you'll see at the top of the file, we already have a vacuum domain defined. So similar to that, we're gonna to need to come down below here, and we're gonna to need to define binary. So I do actually have an example of what an mqtt.yaml structure would look like if you wanna go ahead and go to our blog post, and you can grab it from there. That way you don't have to worry about the formatting, the tabs, and things like that. You can just use it directly. So now that we've created this domain in here, we're gonna go back to our binary.yaml and we're gonna find all of my ESP presence sensors. We're gonna go ahead and take those and we're gonna paste them over in our mqtt.yaml. Now, since we already have the platform defined in here, we can get rid of that entirely. And then our next line here is name. So we're gonna to need to put in a, in order to allow us to have multiple entries for the binary sensor. So I can remove some of this white space here. And then we need to make sure that these are all at the same level. So we're gonna tab those all over. So we'll repeat that process, getting rid of the platform and making sure our tabs are all correct. And if you didn't know this already in VS Code, if you highlight a whole section and hit tab, it'll move them all over by one ended. So now everything is lined up with what's above. So the binary sensor is all good. So we also have to make sure we remove our old ones from binary.sensor. So I cut mine out, but make sure you remove those as well because you don't want duplicates. To test this, go ahead and hit save and then we'll head to our developer tools and click check configuration. So the configuration is valid. So we've now taken care of our binary sensors. So let's go over to the regular sensors.yaml. So we go to the top of our sensors.yaml and we're gonna find MQTT. All right, so I've got some custom defined ones here. I'm gonna grab those, cut, and go back in MQTT.yaml. We'll go ahead and create a new domain sensors at the far left and then paste in those. And again, we need to remove the platform MQTT. I'm going to indent these all. So now they all line up. All right, so we've got the metermon for my metermon video, which is an MQTT. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one and paste that into here. Well, it's always a good idea to have add comments to your YAML code that we know which section starts and ends. So I just added a quick uh, hashtag and for metermon and that will comment that section out so I know what it, what it is. So again, we'll delete the platform, add the hyphen, and then tab everything over. So again, we just wanna repeat this for every single solitary item in our sensors.yaml. So if you are using the ESP presence project, this does not apply to the MQTT room integrations. Those will still stay under your sensors.yaml, so you don't need to touch those at all. So now we're done with sensors. You need to make sure you're checking all of your individual YAML files. So if you're using VS Code, you can click the search here and type in platform MQTT. And this is gonna tell you everywhere that you're gonna find that platform MQTT where you need to remove them. So looking here, I have, these are all commented out, locks commented out. The only one I've got is a switch down here. So the last one is right here, this uh, main join, which, which I can delete. I don't need that anymore. So once you're sure everything has been edited, we'll go ahead and head in and again, check our YAML code by going to developer tools and check configuration. Okay, no more errors. Now, when we restart Home Assistant, those error messages should disappear. So if we go back down to settings and we click on show all repairs, we'll notice all of the MQTT error messages have disappeared. So that means everything's good and we've got our MQTT appropriately set up.
So there you go. There's a quick solution on how to solve the MQTT error messages in your Home Assistant repair dialog before you upgrade to the new 2022.12. And if you notice the ticker over here, we're getting very close to 10,000 subscribers. So if this video was helpful to you, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell because I will be doing a video on how to build one of these LED matrix tickers that can pull data right from Home Assistant. It's a cool project and it's really not too difficult. And so far it's been very, very useful. Now, if you're a fan of Home Assistant, I've got a whole playlist right here of add-ins and integrations that you can check out. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thank you again and I'll see you on the next video.